A very good morning to my lovely students. First of all, let's applaud for your hard efforts and achievement. So congratulations to all for securing good marks and getting promoted in sixth grade. One step ahead to your dream come true. So with this fresh move, let's start with the first chapter of science. I'm your science teacher. Mrs. Rinke Singh will try to explain the chapter with fun and will try to clear your doubts as much as possible. Before moving to the topic, let me ask a simple question. What did you had in your breakfast? So the answers would vary because you all are unique. There are varieties of food like dosa, chapati, vegetables, chicken curry, etc. But if you observe from your breakfast list, you will find there are only two sources that is either plants or animals. So the literal meaning of the chapter is food means what we eat and where it come from that is its sources. The topics covered in this chapter will be point number one food and its importance which means definition of food and what are its importance or significance. Point number two variety of food ingredients of food which includes the variations in the food and what are the substances required to make a particular food item. Point number three sources of food. It means from where food comes that is it may be plants or animals. Fourth and not the least is the types of organisms on the basis of their feeding habits. So, depending on the mode of nutrition, categorization of animals related to their feeding habits. You all know what is food, but how will you define it? Well, students, food is defined as anything that organisms eat or drink for their survival. It gives them energy to perform various life activities. Students, but why food is important to us? Well, it helps to perform day-to-day -day activities. Whether you walk, talk, dance, whatever activities you do, it is just because of food. It provides energy. Imagine yourself a day without food. Well, that day you will feel low in energy and won't feel to perform any activities. It is because you did not have your food that day. It helps in proper growth and development of the body. If we eat good food, proper development of the body will be there. Imagine your journey from kid to grade 6. Of course, you have grown up now. This is because of food. It will keep us healthy. That is why it is said to have a balanced diet food that is having right amount of food at right interval of time. It provides protection from various germs that may cause diseases. Students, if we follow the good eating habit, it will provide immunity to the body, that is, the resistance against diseases, and we won't often be irregular to school due to illness. Do you, do you know a dreadly virus, Corona, COVID-19, has taken so many lives across the world because it affects the immunity? So eat healthy and be healthy. This topic will tell you about variety of food 
ingredients of food. So what is the definition of variety? Variety means having different kind or types of food. There are variation in our food. For example, in breakfast, we take chapati with vegetables or milk. In lunch, we prefer having boiled rice, pulses, salads with green leafy vegetables. In dinner, we take light food like chapati cooked with some dal or vegetables. So, we should try to consume maximum variety of food as possible to boost our immunity. The next topic is ingredients of food. Students, what do you understand by ingredients? Ingredients is nothing but the materials that are required to make the particular food item. For example, if I ask you, how will you cook boiled rice? For that, you will take rice grains and water. So these are the nothing but the ingredients to cook boiled rice. Similarly, to cook dal, you have to take pulses, water, salt, spices. So these are the things that are required to cook dal. This slide will tell you about the sources of food. So the definition is place or living organisms from where food is obtained is called sources of food. There are primarily two sources of food, plants and animals. Whatever we eat since morning to night are obtained from these two sources. For example, if I say that I consumed today green vegetables, so the sources would be from the plants. And if I say that I had a chicken in lunch, so the source would be from the animals. So students, let's understand the difference between the two sources of food, that is plants and animals. Plants, they are also called producers. Do you know why? Because they can make their own food by the process called photosynthesis. They take carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll to do it so. Similarly, they are also called autotrophs. Auto means self and trophs means nutrition that is mode of nutrition so they they are called autotrophs because they can make their own food let's move on to the other source of food that is animals they are called consumers as they cannot make their own food so are directly or indirectly dependent on plants for their survival that is why they are also called heterotrophs. The word hetero means other and troughs means neutral. Students, you all have seen the plant. Can you label it for me? Well, let's brush it up. Flower, fruit, stem, leaf, branch, roots. So, all the parts of the plant can be eaten, which is called the edible parts of the plant. Some of the examples are listed below. Radish, carrot, turnip are certain vegetables can be eaten in the form of the roots. Stem, for example, potato, sugarcane, etc. Flowers, for example, rose, cauliflower, etc. Fruits, for example, apple, banana, mango, and the list continues. Leaves, for example, spinach, cabbage. Wheat, rice, mustard, etc. are consumed in the form of the seeds.
Now let's move on to the animals as a source of food. So we can consume meat, chicken, egg, milk. Milk might be in the form of curd, ghee, butter, cheese, etc. Honey, they are obtained from the honey bees. So these all are the things that is eaten by us and the sources is animal. Now, the last slide is about the categorization of animals on the basis of food habits. So I'm sure you all have studied in your junior classes about three different eating habits of animals. They are herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Animals which eat only plant and plant products are called herbivores animals or herbivores. Example would be cow, deer, goat, etc. Animals which eat only flesh of other animals are termed as carnivores animals or carnivores. Example is lion, tiger, etc. Omnivores animals which eat both plants and flesh of other animals are called omnivores animals. Examples would be human, crow, etc.